Hi! This time I wanted to talk about the consistency that should exist when the player characters interact with the game world. I want to start this video with an example from the Knights of the Dinner Table comic strip. In one of those, I don't remember the number or the volume, but in one of those adventures you have BA, the game master of course, he is running this game. The player characters are moving through this dungeon and they reach a dead end. And one of the characters, I think it was Bob, he said, I want to search for secret doors. So he makes his roll and the game master is like, you don't find any secret rolls. So moving on and then Bob is like, I am certain there is a secret door behind that wall. Let's do something to find it. And they start to do all sorts of things. It gets to a point where they are actually using their tools, their shovels and their uh, pickaxes to carve their way through the dead end of the dungeon. And they won't stop. Even though they are digging their way through solid wall, there is obviously nothing behind that zone or that section rather, but they are so stubborn, so into the idea that there is a secret door behind some somewhere in that dead end. So it, it turns into a very ridiculous situation. I think there was also another situation in which they were moving through a dense forest and they're like, we're going to move through this section of the forest. And the game master is like, you find more trees. They are quite thick. They are very close together. I think it was in that um, in Knights of the Dinner Table. But well, the trees are very close together and that's it. And they are, there must be something down that uh, path and they keep on going and they're, they're just keep on going and going convinced that there is something in that section of the forest something special a long time ago i have commented that in real life if you walk out of your house and you keep on going just walking walking and walking and walking you're not going to find anything special in most situations you will get to a wall perhaps a tree a building depends on where you live but there is no guarantee that there is going to be something special there. At least not in a conventional sense. You can go quite philosophical about it that, in the sense that, oh, but the journey as I walked and I noticed the small details, I thought to myself, oh, the secret of life. No, <laughs> I don't mean in that sense. I mean that in a lot of cases, a zone, an area, that's just it. It's a section of, of this world and there is nothing there. Unless something else happens, there is usually nothing special about a particular section. That's why when you go to a certain place, you have a destination in mind. So the same applies in tabletop role-playing games if you go into a certain direction. And this happens with some immature players when they are playing a sandbox and they just keep on going and going and going in a certain direction. Even though it is a sandbox, it doesn't mean that there will always be something interesting. Maybe you, you get to the end of a cliff. Maybe you want to go down that cliff. And maybe there is nothing at the bottom. Maybe some animal bones or something. Maybe you want to climb up the other section of the cliff. Uh, sorry, the, of the cliff. And then there is nothing there. So when it comes to interacting with the game world, there must be some consistency. And, and why do I say this? Because in some horrible game master guides out there, I remember in a bundle of holding bundle, I purchased several books. A lot of them were pretty good, but you had a couple of game master guides that were not very good. And in one of those expert tips, you know, the tips given by the RPG professionals, the professional authors and all of that, or that those people that have been running games for who knows how, how long, they give some horrifying tips. Remember, when it comes to tabletop role-playing games, it's all about the quality, not the quantity. Just the other day, I just saw a game of one famous RPG author that supposedly he, he referred to himself as a, as a child prodigy because he had been running Dungeons & Dragons since he was seven years old. And you see, now that he's a grown man, perhaps 50 or 60 years old, I don't know how old he is, he, he doesn't know how to roleplay. 
At the start of the session, I saw a few bits of roleplay and then everything went into a mother may I conversation, always out of character, always metagaming. So you can see that people like him, they have been, they think they have been playing a tabletop role-playing game all of their lives. Mm. <laughs> but they have been playing something else. They have been having a mother may I conversation. So, yes, uh, you have to be mindful about that. It's quantity over quality. How many years, how many thousands or millions of sessions, according to them, have been played in a non-RPG way, in a Mother May I conversation with zero immersion. So, uh, okay, moving on. <laughs> like I said, in those horrible tips and advice, there was in this book, it says something like, if the players are looking for a suspicious character in a mystery, and they think that a non-player character is the culprit, even though, even though that non-player character is innocent, you should make it so that that non-player character is the villain, the culprit. How moronic is that? It stinks of desperation. Perhaps desperation of the game master not being able to please his players, to satisfy his players. Oftentimes you hear that the game master should entertain the players. No. This is a marketing ploy, so that people, uh, that is, we always have more players than game masters. That way the players kind of try to convince their game masters that they should entertain them, and therefore they should buy the supplements, the books, they should run things with the sole purpose of entertaining their players, and that way the players are going to be happy, and the game master who is desperate for players, he is supposed to also feel happy, but it's not about that. The Entertainment, the fun, comes forth naturally when everyone is role-playing and playing a game. You are playing a role and you are playing a game. And then it becomes entertaining, it becomes fun. You don't have like a little clown that is going to entertain the rest of the group. This also applies to the players, of course. It's, it's a group effort, it's not about a performer trying to entertain everyone. So yes, that smells of, of desperation, and that's why I, I talked about the Knights of the Dinner Table example. Imagine that a group is looking for secret doors, and because the Game Master wants to keep them pleased, he's going to make it so that there is actually a secret door when they are searching for that door. There is no consistency. In real life, if, you, if I am going to look for secret doors in that wall over there in my house, there is no guarantee there is going to, that there is going to be a secret door. And there are houses that have secret doors, but in my case, I know for a fact that that wall over there, it doesn't have a secret door. So imagine how ridiculous it would be just because it fits the story that now there is a secret door. And this is to the exclusion of some comedy role-playing games. In some comedy role-playing games, some absurd things happen that are not exactly consistent. They are there to represent those comedy tropes. But in any other genre, I would advise against this because it kills the fictional reality of the setting. That's the reason why, for example, when you are preparing your adventures, you already know the roles of the non-player characters. You already know the structure, the architecture, the purpose of the different adventure sites. And even if you don't like to prepare things beforehand, when you are running things, you already have somewhat of a vague idea on how things are going to proceed. And if you start to please the, or satisfy the investigative efforts of the player characters all the time, you're basically making it, making everything so easy with the excuse of the story moving forward. This is another trait of the frustrated author. How about instead of trying to dictate a story, you let the story flow naturally according to the interactions of the player characters with the game world? If you want the, like I said, in a dungeon situation and you want the players to keep on moving forward, there's a dead end over there. Let them search elsewhere. In that way, the story, according to the way that the story unfolds, following the interactions of the player characters, they reach that dead end. Maybe they lost some valuable time. It depends on the mission, on the quest. 
now the adventure needs to proceed elsewhere. If you have a mystery going on, you have villains, culprits, but, but also innocent non-player characters. If the player characters think that an, a non-player character is guilty, that doesn't transform the non-player character into a villain or, or, or the guilty, the culprit. The story maybe is now about the player characters mistaking the identity, the, the innocence, uh, not believing in the innocence of the non-player character. And now the villain does something else because the characters got too careless and they are investigating this other non-player character. Now the villain is going to take advantage of that distraction, that unintentional decoy to carry out some other crime or terrible deed. So like I said, in those horrible pieces of advice that, oh, if the players are looking for secret doors over there, let them find one. If they want to, they think that this non-player character is the villain, let it be the villain. You are basically treating your players as if they were small kids, like babies, like, oh, do you want this sweet little baby? Here, have some, some candy or whatever. Doesn't make sense. Not for mature role players, at least. It's kind of like those game masters that are constantly handing out artifacts, the most powerful magical items, tons and tons of experience points because they don't want their players to feel unsatisfied. Again, it stinks of desperation, as in, oh, please keep on playing with me, I will give you experience points and artifacts, or, or keep on playing with me, and every time you look for a secret door, it's going to be there. And when you try to figure out this puzzle or mystery or whatever, you are always right, and you always know who the culprit is and all of that, so I highly recommend that you keep consistency when it comes to the interactions of the characters with the game world, make it feel real. In real life, sometimes we make mistakes on our assumptions, on our investigations, on our own interaction with the real world. We're not always going to get it right. That's part of the story of life. So those are my thoughts. I would love to know your, your thoughts on this. Uh, thank you for watching my videos. As always, I thank you for your likes and your comments. If you have any other questions or comments, please let me know. And thank you so much to those of you that are going the extra mile to support the channel. If anyone else wishes to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. And remember, it is better to roleplay and fail in character than not to roleplay and fail as a player. Like in this case. <laughs> Once again, thank you and see you later.